Now we have this hard-coded 4x2 grid of eight memory cards. The first thing I want to do in this segment is create some flexibility so we can easily increase or decrease the number of memory cards in our game. And the second thing I want to do is create a bunch of vector icons, which will be used as the default icons when we play a new memory game. So first off, in order to build in more flexibility into the dimensions of our memory game, there's a couple things we need to adjust. So first off, right now, we are passing in 2 and 4 here as the dimensions of the board, which is incorrect. That'll change depending on how many cards are in a memory game. And second, we also are passing in 2 here for the span count, which is how many columns are in our board. And that also might change. So in order to encode all the different information about the size of the board, I'm actually going to create an enum called board size. And so if you open up the directory where main activity is located, I'm going to create a new package here a new package called models. And we're going to add to this later on with a couple other things. But for now, the only thing this will have is a Kotlin file called board size. And this is going to be an enum. And an enum can optionally take in a value. And so we're going to pass in a val here called numcards. And this is going to be an int. So in our current example, what we have now, now num cards would be eight, because four by two. We're going to have three different values of board size. First is easy, second is medium, and that'll be 18 cards. And then lastly is hard, which is 24 cards. And these are the different options for the memory game. So the current version that we're playing is easy, there's only eight cards, medium is 18, and hard is 24. We also want to encode in this enum information about the width and height corresponding to each board. And so I'm going to define a, a couple other methods here. One is called get width. It's going to return an int. And depending on the value of the enum, I would like to be able to figure out what is the width of the game. And so the way we can do this is say return using the when construct. This is referring to the board size on which we're operating, easy, medium, or hard. And the when expression is similar to a switch statement. So it'll evaluate a list of conditions and it'll return when the first one is met. So we're gonna have Android Studio help us to create all the remaining branches. And what that did is create a branch for each of the three enum values. And so in the case of easy, the number of cards width-wise is gonna be two. In the medium case, we're going to have a six by three board. So we'll have three cards wide. And in the hard case, we're going to have four cards wide. It'll be six by four. We're also going to have one method here, which is get height. And one thing to observe is that the height is fully determined once we know the number of cards and the width, right? And so the value here is simply going to be the number of cards divided by get width. And finally, there's one more method I want to add in here called get num pairs this is also going to return int. And this method is going to represent how many pairs of cards are there, right? So if we have eight memory cards in our game, that means we're going to have four unique pairs. And so this is simply going to be the number of cards divided by two. Okay, awesome. So now back in main activity, instead of hard coding an eight, let's define a variable up here called private var board size. This is of type of our enum that we defined. And initially the value is going to be board size dot easy. And I would like the memory board adapter to take in the board size instead of the number of pieces. And then the grid layout manager, the second parameter is how many columns are there. And that'll simply be board size dot get width. Now let's fix up the adapter and the second parameter should be of type board size instead of the int. So I'm going to tap this red light bulb and change the parameter to be board size. So going back into memory board adapter, um, let's change the variable name to reflect that. And now that we have this, we can update get item count to be board size dot num cards. That's the total number of elements in our memory game. And then the final thing we need to do is update what we're dividing the width and height by. And this is going to be the width divided by the board size get width. And the height we're going to divide by how many elements tall is our board. Let's try it. 
from the UI perspective, this should be identical. And you can see, see it is. But the benefit of what we, did, what we did is we can now very easily adjust the size of the board, for example, making it hard. And now we should expect to see a six by four grid instead of a four by two. And you can see that that actually happened. And the dimensions and spacing of these memory cards is looking good. Awesome. So the next thing I want to do in this segment is create icons, which will be the actual underlying image for each of these cards. And this luckily turns out to be really easy because Android Studio has a really nice way to do this open up the res directory, which stands for resources, and right click on drawable and go to new and tap on vector asset. If you look at clip art here, Android Studio comes bundled in with all of these free open source icons that we can use. And this is what we're going to be using to power the default version of our memory game. So for example, why don't we start by creating one icon, which is the face. So just search for face and we have this nice clip art. And I want to change the color of this to be red. So red is 255, 00. Choose that. And then let's also rename this to be IC face. Tap on next. And then this is just telling us that it'll be located inside of the drawable directory, IC underscore face, and tap on finish. Let's peek inside the created file. And one of the things that amazed me when I first learned about vector graphics is that the file is simply XML data which describes the set of points, lines, and curves along with associated color information. So the image that we're seeing on the right is completely described by the text in the XML file. And so the really nice thing about these vector assets is that they're much, much smaller compared to a JPEG or PNG file where you have to encode information about all these different pixels and there could be thousands of pixels in your image. And the other nice thing about this is that these are infinitely scalable. So because we're just defining the path data here, whether the image is 100 by 100 or 1,000 by 1,000, this image will always be crystal clear. So that's a really nice thing about these vector assets. And so if we look back to the board size, the maximum size of our board is 24. And that means we need to create 12 unique icons for our memory game. So right now we have one, we're gonna create 11 more. So let me explain the logic behind how I created the vector icons and then you can do something similar. That you're free to choose whatever icons you want in order to build your memory game. But I did some thinking about it and there are two things that we would like to optimize for as we pick our icons. One is that the icons, the vector icons that we create should be distinct shapes. And second, they should be distinct colors. And the idea here is that when you're playing memory, you want to have each unique image be as distinct as possible. So the shapes will come simply because we're choosing different icons. The colors are a bit more interesting. So as we think about what colors to make our icons, each color is represented as a red, green, blue component. And each of these three components is an in integer between zero and 255. If you wanted to create as distinct colors as possible, the way you would do this is try and have the distance between each color as per the RGB value be as different as possible. So the first thing that comes to mind is why don't we light up or maximize each individual component? And that's how we get a solid red, a solid green, and solid blue, just by having each of the three components be 255. We can also do something like this, where we go halfway on each. So you have 12800, and that becomes a little bit of a darker red. And similarly for this dark green and this dark blue. For the other six colors, we can combine each of these three primary colors. So we can make yellow by combining red and green. And then I picked a couple others as well that you're welcome to copy from me as well. So combining these colors with different icons that we picked, here's what I came up with. On the left is what I'll name each icon. I see face, flower, gift, and so on. The second column indicates the name of this icon in the Vector Asset Studio, so you can find it. And the third column shows you what the icon will look like with the selected color. Now let's go create these in Android Studio. Let's repeat the process for creating the face icon several more times. So we'll right click on Drawable, go to New, and go to Vector Asset. The next asset we'll create is the flower. Local florist is the name. And we'll change the name in our project to be icy flower. And we'll change the color to be green. Tap on finish. And now I'm gonna speed through this for the other 10 icons.
All right, done. Now we have these 12 different icons. The next step is to reference them in column code so we can start to use them in our memory game. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to create a new package called utils. And inside of the utils, there's going to be a colon file called constants. And we're going to now define a list of these drawables that we just created. So I'll call this default icons. And it's going to be a list of all the different drawables. So I see face. And then we have to import resources. And similarly for the other 11 icons that we created, I'm just going to reference all of them by saying r.drawable. The name of the icon. Now we have this list variable called default icons, which will be the icons we use in our memory game. Let's go back now into the main activity. Let me exit out a couple of these files. And what we would like to do is pass into the adapter the list of image icons, these drawables, that should make up that game. So we're going to, have, we're going to end up adding one more parameter here. The way we'll do this is grab the default icons that we just defined. I'm going to randomize that list. And then we're going to take a certain number. And the number of images that we take will be board size dot get num pairs. And the reason we want to do this is because, for example, in the eight card memory game, we're going to have four distinct images, right? It'll be the number of cards divided by two, which is what we're doing in get num pairs. So we're going to take four images out of the default icons. So this is going to return to us the set of chosen images for our memory game. And now what we want to do is we want to double up those images. So we'll end up with two copies of each image. It will say randomized images is equal to chosen images, double it up. So we have each image in there twice. And we want to randomize that list by again calling dot shuffled. And now this randomized images list is what we're going to pass in to the adapter. So tap on that red light bulb and add the randomized images as a parameter tap on refactor and then now let's go into the definition of memory board adapter and i'm going to rename this to be card images it's going to be a list of int these integers represent one of these drawable resources so now we can actually start to reference this inside of bind so what we want to do is based on the position we want to grab the corresponding image and that should be the image on the image button so they set image resource and that'll be card images. Oops, we have to actually make this card images a private val so we can reference it. So now we'll go back here, card images and position. Let's try it. And it looks like we have a build error here. I need to add in the closing bracket. Let's try it again. This succeeded. So right now, you'll remember in mainactivity.kotlin, we're hard coding in the board size of hard, which means we have 24 memory cards in the game. And you can see that all the vector icons that we created are in this board, and there are exactly two copies of each. And because we're randomizing it, if I run this application again, we should see that these images are in different places. So right now we have this graduation cap, the school icon in the top left. Let's run this again, and hopefully that should be in a different position now. So you can see it, it is. And then if we also go back into the easy version of the board, run this. Now we should be randomly picking four images out of the 12 that we have. And there should be two copies of each placed randomly among the eight positions. And if we run the app again, we should have chosen different images and they should be in different positions, which we are seeing here. Awesome. So now we have this well-defined board size concept along with a set of icons to play the game. In the next part, we'll start implementing the game logic. If you like what we've built so far, drop a comment and let me know. If you want to help me out, hit that like button and subscribe so you know when the next part comes out. I'll see you soon. Bye.